shields up iron breakers and welcome back to cons cast today is a very special day indeed because we have both jono and joe from capcom to talk about monster hunter how are you guys doing jono go first i have to like tell you guys which one to go otherwise we're going to talk over each other so i'll try to to mention that as we go along <laughs> That's right. Even with the first syllable, me and Joe are both on edge because it's like, J <laughs> <Here> <laughs> it could comes. be anyone, could be anyone. <laughs> but, you know, I'm great. Like, it's super awesome to be here to have both of us here as well. Um, Obviously, a ton of Wilds news has just dropped. So really excited to talk to yourself and Joe about that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having us on. Today's a big day. We've got the the previews hitting from uh, Summer Game Fest. So, yeah, lots of cool details and I'm, I'm super excited to get into them. So like both Summer Game Fest as well as the State of Play trailers were absolutely phenomenal. Personally, I'm very partial to the State of Play trailer because it showed a little bit more gameplay, but it was an absolute celebration of Monster Hunter over the, the last couple of days. And it's been an absolute blast to just experience that as a part of the community. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I was like, oh, do I, do I? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, it was super excited for us internally as well. Like, you know, we were so excited to share more, uh, obviously, because it's been, been a short break uh, since December and that elusive summer tag has finally arrived. So, yeah, like, and just seeing the responses, hearing the music, just seeing Reddit, Twitter pop off, creators like yourself, the community going wild, like, excuse the pun. <laughs> it, it was a real fun time, wasn't it, Joe? Yeah, seriously, it's been uh, it's been a whirlwind the last couple of weeks. I mean, it's been real busy, but... Um... Yeah, such a good feeling to get those two trailers out. We've been working on them for a pretty long time. So, um, yeah, it, it's crazy. This is like the start of like a pretty long, I think, journey with this game. Um, and, you know, it's step step one and step two, I guess. But, um, yeah, there's lots more to come. So we're, we're super excited. Okay. So one of the things <laughs> that you guys weren't able to confirm to me the, the last time we spoke, and I believe now it has been officially confirmed, so I just want to reiterate it here because it's one of the things that the community has been concerned about, especially with the releases of Worlds and Rise. I say Worlds, World and Rise, because there was that whole phasing process where it's like, okay, so first it's on consoles, then it's on PC, and then when it came to Rise, first it's on Switch, then it's on PC, now it's on consoles. And it's like this staggered thing in the community is like, oh, but I want to play it in this platform, that, that platform. We are getting simultaneous release on all platforms, correct? Yes, yeah, so as you, as you saw, uh, SGF Ryozo San was on stage um, and he confirmed obviously that the importance of being able to play with your friends no matter where they play. And off the back of that, obviously something I think everyone has been waiting for for a long time. What was that? That C word, Joe, that was dropped? Yeah, I mean, it was it was a pretty triumphant moment, I think, for us to uh, to announce crossplay. So um, we've been holding on to that one for a long time. I think that's something <laughs> that um, you know people at Capcom past and present have been like really clamoring for. Um, you know, with, with the team, like really, you know, making sure that this was something that we felt was a really strong priority from the community. So um, to be able to like finally announce that news and and share it with everybody, uh, it was it was a pretty big moment. So we were, we're super happy about that. Yeah, it was it was just really cool to see. I was super happy. I was a little bit sad that we're not getting cross save as well, which is something that would have been useful for me personally. But I can understand why it probably has to do with like the platforms and the selling of DLC and all of that stuff. And each platform wants to have their own DLC and whatnot. And we all know, at least most people should know by now how that stuff kind of works. I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I think like it's become more commonplace now, so it gets a little uh, taken for granted, but it is a pretty complex uh, process to do these sort of things. I mean, um, you know, you take a look at like things like Rise uh, <clears throat> and World, like we didn't necessarily have like the account infrastructure to be able to like build that stuff, right? Um, it's not just something like you flip a switch and you turn it on. Um, Wait, what? So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it was it was like a, a pretty significant undertaking for the team to be able to build that out. Um, obviously, we haven't shared like all the details on how it's going to work yet, but um, yeah, it is... Uh, it was it's something that you know we had to like really be in there on day one to help you know the the team like really build that out and how that's going to work for people so um you look at games like street fighter um i think that's a great example of how they were able to kind of like implement that in game into the game so 
um, yeah, look forward to sharing more details on that in the future. So I do have a, a couple of questions in regarding to that because I looked through the um, official website. And one of the things that I thought was interesting is that you guys are not asking people to have a Capcom ID to play multiplayer, which I thought was going to be like a core part of, you know, because you guys have been implementing the Capcom ID with Exo, Exo Primal and all of that. And I figured, oh, you know, I was just expecting it to be a necessary thing for Wilds. But I think it's actually good that you're not making it mandatory. But I am wondering, can you do crossplay without Capcom ID? As or is that not something as, we're talking about? I, I, again, like, yeah, like as as far as like information around that's kind of going, you know, we've revealed crossplay and we've revealed that you know you can still play the game without Capcom ID. Um, yeah. But those finer details will be kind of coming along as we yeah. get closer to kind of like so you know, launch and, and other bits. I guess I guess I'll take this opportunity to also mention, guys. There's no way that we're going to get responses to everything that I'm going to ask, so I'm going to ask for a little <laughs> bit of understanding because the the information is going to be revealed in waves, just like it was, uh, you know. So a couple of months from now, during uh, Gamescom, we're going to be re they're going to be revealing again. See, there I go again. We're going to be revealing like I'm, I'm a plant from Capcom. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that corporate show. <laughs> 100%. I'm just a plant. No, it was like, uh, you guys are going to be revealing more information at Capcom and whatnot, so there are some things that are not going to be revealed today. But, you know, it's just something that I was curious about the crossplay. So I have a, an interesting question before we dive into the, the nitty-gritty of, of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one is going to be specific to you guys from what you've seen so far internally and all of that that you can discuss. But, like, Joe, what would you say is the key feature of monster hunter wilds because if you look for instance to monster hunter world and even the the just the word world kind of reveals that a lot of it is like hey look the map is seamless now it's massive it's got all of these interactions and stuff so that was kind of like one of the big focuses of monster hunter world and naturally bringing it over to consoles and all that and then when you look at rise i see it almost as capcom saying okay so what if we take the learnings of world and we put that in a portable game what does that look like and then you get rise so what do you think is the the key thing for wilds yeah i think it's it's really this is truly an evolution of the previous games right this is we've been really deliberate in our wording to call this the next generation of monster hunter and it, that is for a reason right um they've really stepped up pretty much every aspect of the game as much as possible i mean um, it's not going to be you know you jump into like a hunt like in Monster Hunter World, and it's just like a nicer looking version of that. This is a really different flow to how you hunt. Things are very seamless. There's no um, there's no loading screens between you know the village areas and the rest of the world. Everything is just kind of like one you know one map. So um, it's going to change really dramatically how you experience the game. So I mean you know I think the the key word is like that seamless part of it, right? So um, when you jump into a hunt. I, it's pretty much like anything can happen, right? Like the world is fully dynamic. There's this really huge emphasis on kind of like the different wildlife and the packs and the weather. So um, for me, I think the, the big difference with this game is like really how they've created a world where no two hunts feel the same. Um, you jump into a hunt and the flow of it is different. Things happen seamlessly. Um, there are packs of monsters. There's all this endemic life that's happening. There's these weather changes. Um, the environments, you can use them to, you know, um, inflict damage on the monster. There's other monsters that come into it. So um, it's really how they've built like this really you know, huge living world that um, really, I think, like anything can happen. So it's going to change really dramatically how each hunt feels. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's so much to this game. So I mean, it's really hard for me to pick one. But I think I think that's like kind of the key thing for me is that um, it's really an evolution of, of previous games where um, the hunt has really just change it to something really really different uh really exciting though jono would you have a uh, anything else you'd add to that yeah i mean i think joe hit the nail on the head with the word seamless seamless is this kind of big part of the evolution as we go into monsanto wilds um you know as you traverse this world the locales as you finish a hunt even you don't all get sent back to the village or you know camp you can just keep on going and hunt something else what you want to do it, it defines your experience in in wilds you you know really have a lot more control uh as what you you do alone or, or with your friends and you know the weather isn't isn't just like this really cool cosmetic thing 
it changes the monster's behavior. It changes what monsters you encounter. It changes the small monsters and endemic life behavior. So I'd say seamless and evolution. And also the team have put a lot of effort on crafting a really engaging story. You know, so if you're someone who's into your God of Wars and your Horizons and you're like, you know, you've not tried Monster Hunter before because you're like, oh, you know, I heard the story's quite light, you know, but the combat's really cool. You know, the team have really put a lot of time on this and you can see with the, the Hunter being voiced, the Palico having a voice, these really defined and early introduced NPCs that you've seen, um, you know, in the trailers. You know, the team are really crafting this immersive, seamless experience that both Monster Hunter fans will enjoy and those who really enjoy like a narrative driven experience can also um dive into and i'm sure we'll touch on some of the bits around oh, yeah. that uh as we as we talk a bit more yeah i have i i want to go in depth into a lot more of the stuff that you guys uh, mentioned in both of your answers because i have very specific things in regards <laughs> to those that i want to ask yeah. but i i already know so i want to like preface the the rest of the discussion that there's going to be people going to list more narrative focus oh my god they're going to be scared about it because a lot of people don't really care that much about the narrative which yeah. you know it's it's whatever there's different types of players that enjoy different aspects of games i just want to make sure that you guys understand i'm going to be diving deeper into this part Good. of it but I have a couple of other things that I want to get through first. So this next one, I'm probably not going to get an answer, but I'm going to throw it out there anyways. Uh, new weapon. Is this something that we can confirm is not happening or is this something that you're still playing close to the vest? The reason I ask is because you guys haven't mentioned anything about a potential new weapon. And if you drag this on, you're going to be feeding into the hopes of people that they didn't say no. So I'm giving you the chance to get out ahead of it. Be like, no, nope, there's no new weapon. <laughs> or, is, or we're not talking about that. I, I don't know. One, one of you guys tell me. <laughs> I mean, um, I'll start and then I'll, I'll bat over to Joe. But, you know, as you've seen, obviously, because we're chatting today, literally yeah. the embargo's just lifted on SGF. There's all this hot information. And, you know, in the interviews, Ryoso-san and Takuda-san both talk about the 14 weapons that are in wilds and particularly that all of the weapons have new moves yeah. um and on top of that as well we'll touch a bit later i'm only gonna sprinkle a little tease on is that obviously light bow gun heavy bow gun and hunting horn have had the broadest attention should mm. we say paid to them to make them and i quote crunchier so you know that you know we can talk about what what is there and how they've evolved the weapons you know and love and how you're going to be kind of forging an even stronger relationship with them and their you know their new moves and kind of play styles with focus mode yeah i think you kind of said it all i think um a lot of the team's uh emphasis emphasis at least right now that we're talking about has been on you know really refining the existing weapons and adding some new moves to them so um yeah the focus mode is a big part of that it's going to change up um what you're able to do with each weapon pretty dramatically okay well jumping on the back of that no confirmation, no neg no absolute <laughs> cancellation. So we're all just going to have to keep waiting. But jumping on the back of that, let's talk about that focus mode, which is one of the things that, um, you know, everybody's questioning because on the website it says makes hunting easier or some variation of those words. And people are a little bit concerned. So I don't know which one of you would know better about focus mode, but whoever does, uh, let let's go ahead. Let's hear about focus mode. I, I want to know everything about it. Yeah, I can kind of jump on it. So, you know, I basically it's when you when you hold one of the buttons that enables focus mode, um, it's kind of like enabling a stance, right? So I wouldn't like really classify this as like a lock on or anything. Um, it doesn't really do that. Um, you essentially kind of like enter a stance with your weapon in focus mode, a reticle comes up um, and you have access to another set of moves. Um, it also highlights some of the weak points on a monster. So you might see those pop up and really makes them a little bit easier to see. Um, kind of centers the camera over you, which, um, you know, makes it a little bit easier in, instead of like kind of like fighting the camera. It's kind of like making sure your positioning is correct. Right. So I wouldn't say this is something that's like necessarily like, oh, it's an easy mode. Like I'm just going to spam focus mode all the time and I'm going to um, like just absolutely dominate the monster. That's not what's going to happen. Um, it's really just kind of like a, a like a stance for you, like another um, another thing in your tool set um, that unlocks like all this new the, all these new moves that you'll be able to use. Uh, and on top of that, obviously, you have like access to all the existing moves for each weapon. So, um, yeah, it's it's kind of just like it adds more to your arsenal versus, you know, something that's like, oh, it's going to be like an easy mode for you to just really, you know, slice your way through each monster. But um, yeah, Jono, what do you think? 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, what you said was right as well, because, you know, in a lot of places like on the website, you know, the, the term easy is kind of quite, it's quite a loaded term depending on how you look at it. But, you know, it's this tool that um, and is, was explained as Jeff by the team that can make it easier for new players to learn and settle into Monster Hunter, pick up the skills, because positioning is one of, I think, the biggest kind of skill gaps you 100%. learn in Monster Hunter yeah. and aim in. And this kind of helps smoothen that transition. But on top of that, for ex experienced players, it will help you take your game even higher. You know, you've got these new moves. You can be even more precise. You can turn your hunting into an art form, you know. Um, so it's not just a crutch by any means. It's not, you know, I know people might be like, oh, it's like Defender Armor and stuff like that. No, it's a new tool that can help players become hunters like us. But for those already knowledgeable, it takes your game to another level. So... I have a theory about focus mode, which is I think that when you enter focus mode, your mobility is going to be severely limited. Is this something that we can talk about? Uh, not necessarily for every weapon. Okay, um, so it varies based you know, that on might, weapon. That might be something. Yeah, that might not be something. I mean, to be honest, that we even know <laughs> that. Both yeah, know. exactly. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think you could see in the trailer. So you kind of do enter. Like I said, it's like a stance. So you do on, enter. On great like sword, a, you see him like yeah. going like this, and yeah. So yeah, I, I assume yeah. they would be You're not going to be just like rolling around. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you'd be quite a bit slower. Your guard comes up. So, um, yeah, you, you can't just like kind of move around freely while you're in that mode. Um, it also doesn't drain any stamina. So yeah. that's not something you have to worry about either. Um, but there's, there's no you know, cooldown like with anything, there are trade-offs. There's no, no cooldown. Okay, so you can just no. enter the stance whenever you want. So it's going to be more about figuring out the monster's moveset and knowing when it's mm. safe to enter that stance, basically. Yeah, it's it's very yeah. much a, you can capitalize on opportunities with that stance or create opportunities. Um, and as mentioned in you know some of the interviews, you know it's it can be linked to the wounding mechanic as well, which is why the wounds become visible when yeah. you're in that stance. Bef but before we go to wounding, because I want to jump into that as well, uh, you mentioned a reticle that pops up when you go into into. Damn it. My, my brain, the focus mode, there's a reticle that pops up. Do you aim that with the right stick? Or, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming controller, obviously, you know, move your mouse, whatever. Is that the, the point? So you go into there and it's almost like aiming a light bow gun? Yeah, that's that's pretty much what it's like. Um, it is a really like, you know, yeah, it's like you know, a bow gun reticle that basically comes up. I mean, it looks okay. a little bit different, but um, yeah, and, it's, it's essentially just like that. And you mentioned highlighting monster parts. How is the highlighting done? Like, do we get additional contrast or is it like a different color? Because like, it can be very immersion breaking if all of a sudden, okay, engaging Terminator vision. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which I'm, I'm assuming that's not what it is. No, it's not like a detective mode type of thing where it's just like, hey, my, you know, I'm going to be playing this game in like a sepia tone for the entire thing. It's yeah. not like that. Um, you'll just see kind of like a light red glow on, on some of the okay. monsters weak parts. Okay, okay, okay. That's, that's cool. So my interpretation was that focus mode, you're going to be using it for doing stuff like crazy parries, which is one of the things that we do. So you can do the crazy parries, the counterattacks, and then you can do the finishing moves on wounded parts, which we'll talk more about, right? Yeah, it opens up a whole new repertoire. Um, yes, yeah, once again, to capitalize on opportunities you've created or to, you know, uh, get yourself out of a bad situation if the monster's on your tail. Okay. So it can be used both offensively and defensively. And, and of course, it's going to have different moves depending on which weapon you have. What about the power clash that we see at the end of the State of Play trailer? Is that related to focus mode or is that a different mechanic entirely? <clears throat> Yeah, I can't say for every weapon, but um, it is something that can be triggered in focus mode. Um, it's all kind of like based on timing. So if you enable okay. focus mode at the right time and you um, you kind of like, you know, kind of basically parry the monster at the right time, that's something that can happen. You can get a power um, clash, but not always then. Yeah. Yeah, not always. So basically the action, again, I know that I'm getting really nitty gritty. So, but the action that we <laughs> see with the parry could be something that could end in a power clash as opposed to ending with the parry encounter that we got, which was the first move that we see him do in focus mode. I think it depends right. on what the monster's going to do to you. Like, if the monster's yeah. going to, like, bite you, like, obviously we see Doshiguma going in for yeah. a big crunch, <clears throat> then that is the context-sensitive kind of thing. Whereas if Doshu's going in for, like, an overhead, overhead swing, you can't just force a clash onto it to, like, okay. you know... Yeah, it's not so, like kind of... Um, 
mountain where you can kind of go i'm going to mount the monster it's kind of like <laughs> yeah. how you yeah you know. so so again it just reinforces the whole notion that the whole point of the focus mode is going to be know the monster's move set and know when to use focus mode and that is going to be how you dictate when to use it as opposed to oh i just activate focus mode now it's easy mode and it's done yeah, but it does have that kind of the, the precise aim. So yeah, at a basic level, it will make it easier to fight the monster how you want to target in the head, you know, okay. the front claws and stuff like that. And then as you said, on the more advanced level, it opens up new opportunities to do powerful moves and to kind of, you know, make combat really, really engaging. Okay, so wounding. What is wounding and how does it work? Because compare it to something like tenderizing yeah i don't know how far we can get into this but essentially <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um essentially you know each monster you'll, you'll be able to like basically you know exploit those weak spots on each monster yeah. with the wounding you can also destroy the wounds um which causes extra damage so um i think that's that might essentially be all that we revealed on that feature mm -hmm. at this point but um yeah, that's kind of like the basic loop of being able to like highlight so, those points and then destroy them. And you'll get like a little notification on screen that tells you that they've been destroyed. So we we don't know exactly how it becomes wounded because I thought it's just like just hit this play, this part of the monster a bunch of times and it becomes wounded. Or is it related to focus mode in any way or can't we? It's a much more organic approach okay. to kind of that. Um, you know, I guess Clutch Claw was very deliberate, yeah. should we say. Whereas um, Wounding, the team have took a much more organic approach to how that would happen during a fight and, and why that would happen. So you're not like um, blinkered into, right, I need to weaken this part right now with my clutch claw. Um, and that's pretty much, I think, as Joe said, what okay. what we can say on that at this point. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. That That's fair. But yeah, basically, once you get a wound, you can then get into focus mode and break that wound. And that will be like the big animation that we saw him do running alongside the monster with the great sword and each weapon is going to have a different version of that right yes and um you know look forward to seeing more about what <laughs> yeah, each weapon I've, can do listen so. <laughs> i've i've already mentioned that like look there's the gun lance we need to be able to just like literally put the gun lance inside the monster's mouth and then just full brush. Them. That's that so is the only dentistry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Listen, the internal combustion. It just needs to happen. That that that's how it works with the gun lights. Okay, but like you guys were mentioning, we did have like an embargo lift today, and there were a bunch of previews mm. that I was kind of like scurrying through, and I saw mention of something that I thought was really interesting, and it was a mechanic that I really wasn't expecting: sneak attacks. Tell me about yes. sneak attacks. How does this work? Uh, you want to, you want to jump on that, Jono? Yeah. So you know, it's kind of it does what exactly what it says on the tin. It's adding another layer of like immersion and rewarding you for kind of hunting your prey as such. Where if the monster's unaware, you can literally you know sneak up behind it and you'll get a prompt if you choose to do it to open the hunt with or the engagement with a powerful uh, kind of wake up attack effectively. Um, so yeah, if you are a player that likes to strategize more kind of go sneaky beaky rather than all in then yeah it's another way to reward the player for being uh or using their initiative and ingenuity is this something yeah. that potentially oh, i'm sorry joe you were going to say something uh, i was going to say it's, it's it's not something that you can like continually spam right so it's not like <laughs> yeah. you're going to be you're going to be like hopping on your sacred and then like i'm going to go back into <laughs> sneaky mode and then just keep doing sneak attacks and that's how i'm going to you know you know hunt the monster it's it's not that it's really just a way of like opening up the hunt yeah, because because I, I was about to ask. Okay, so can we get him to like run away, and then after he runs away, we can go back into sneak mode, and it's like, but yeah, you you already you already <laughs> predicted that because I was like, oh, can I spam this? Can I just like destroy the monster like this? But yeah, yeah, it it makes sense that it's it's a it's a cool thing about you know you just preparing to to do the hunt, and you can open like that. I think that's cool. Yeah, and I think one of the reasons why this is in there is because. You know, like we said, the hunts are much more seamless now. So it's not like you just enter um, a, like an instanced hunt where you know you're attacking this one monster um, and there's nothing else like on that map. Um, you might decide, you know, you're on the map and you set a target. You might decide like you want to hunt this one specific monster. It's in a pack. This is a great way of just like starting that hunt. And, um, you know, it, it does feel like a little bit more organic. So, um, 
yeah, it's it's a cool addition to the game, but obviously it's not going to like dramatically change, you know, yeah. The, yeah. the flow of the hunt. So it, it's just the opening, and probably if anybody is hunting with me, you're not going to get this off because I'm just going to run up to the monster, wive and fire it in the face, and that's how the hunt starts. That that's pretty much how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so another thing that I've seen that was interesting was, uh, this, I saw mantles being mentioned again. Are we getting mantles? Is this something that we can get into? We can't say too much about this, but yes, they are back. Okay. <laughs> so we're getting, we're getting mantles back. So that, that's confirmed as well. Nice. Um, mounting because there wasn't any mounting shown on any of the trailers. I'm assuming we're not going to get anything like Wyvern riding because it doesn't feel like it makes sense in a game like Monster Hunter Wilds, but can we talk about mounting at all? Is this something that was shown in the, the preview events? or? Yeah, so there are some of the press articles spoke about mountain being shown and it being you know quite familiar to what you'd see in world obviously okay. you know you've left your wire bugs in kimura so you know uh wyvern riding isn't isn't you know the part of that mountain thing but yeah mountain is in the game um so if you're familiar with the world style then you know you feel right at home okay so once again another option to fight so you got clash you got focus mode you got sneak attacks you can mount um so yeah it's just adding to the repertoire and I'm assuming that you can do like uh, jumping attacks off a of sacred because we see that in in the trailers. So that can be something that you can kind of use to try and sneak in a little bit more mounting damage to jump onto the monster. Yeah, you can kind of do it like Yoshi style where you kind of just like, you know, jump off of the <laughs> sacred onto the, the top of the monster. Um, and yeah, it's it, it's essentially what you would imagine like from world where you kind of yeah. just like, if you have enough height, you can get on top of the monster, but it won't be um you know something you can do all the time just because it might not be in that state or you might not be able to just like get above the monster in that way so yeah yeah we have the we have the slinger as well and we do have the hook shot not hook shot hook shots from zelda <laughs> 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 but it's something the, the hook sling or whatever you mm. guys call it to, to pick up items from a distance but it's not going to function like a clutch claw right no, um, it's essentially just for uh, interacting with the world while you're on the sacred. So, okay. um, you know, it's a bigger world. So you're moving at a faster pace when you're on the back of the sacred. So say you want to like drop um, like some debris up top. Um, you'll want to use that hook slinger. Uh, maybe there's something you want to collect that's a little bit far away instead of having to just like run over and have to spam um, circle or, or B or whatever to collect everything. That's a way for you to just do it from distance. So um, it's really more of a convenience there. Yeah, um, we do also see that being used in the uh, counterattack on the greatsword. So he uses it to kind of like rush into the monster, from what I can tell. So I'm assuming some of the stuff, uh, some of the weapons might still use it to like gap close or something like that. Yeah, I think it's part of the animation, so it's not necessarily something that you like yeah, manually you, trigger. You don't um, just trigger. Yeah, it's it just yeah, it, it, it's just yeah. used as okay. Um, two weapons. What can you guys Ooh. tell me about uh, using more than one weapon in a hunt? We have twice as much variety <laughs> with one weapon. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, this is a huge change for Monster Hunter, and one that was yeah. teased before it was officially confirmed. Um, and for those, obviously, the uninitiated, obviously, you can bring any two weapons, any combination, two of the same weapon um, along on the hunt, um, and you can swap when riding sacred to uh you know to do that um and now i've kind of covered that basic bit i'll pass over to joe for for some of the new stuff yeah so i one of the questions that we saw quite a bit was if you could carry two of the same weapon like say you want like two charge blades um that have no, two elements, gun lances that is... two gun lances joe <laughs> <laughs> two gun lances and yeah you can do that so um you know, it's <laughs> if you really want to just like bring two of the uh, two of the same weapon, you can do that. Um, I'll be running two great swords. So um, see, there you go. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, but one of one of the things that I'm curious about, and th this is probably again just me asking stuff that you guys can't talk about yet. But do we know yet if um, we can if, if the armor you you're basically going to have to tailor your set to make use of both weapons, or if it's like no, I swapped to this weapon and now my whole set changes instantly? Because I so, know a lot of people uh, are going to be curious about that one. In some of the interviews that come out today, Takuda san was actually asked this question and he mentioned, and to kind of paraphrase, that whilst we can't share much at the moment, um, you know, there's a you know, we've got a lot to talk about before launch, 
Um, as you progress through the game, there will be gear options that incorporate the fact that you can use two different weapons. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Maybe uh, <laughs> dual, dual dual decorations or something like that. Who knows? But basically, we do, we don't know anything about that yet. My theory is still that, like, look, you need to make a set that accommodates for both weapons, and good luck with that. You know, that's the downside of, uh, you know, you have the upside. Hey, I can use two different weapons. The downside, I can't specialize on one of them, on both of them. I mean, so you know, I think I think that would actually be fair. But yeah. But while we're on the topic of uh, of mounted mounting and sacred and all of that stuff, uh, how does mounted combat work? Because in the latest trailer, we actually see the hunter do a swing from sacred, and I'm just wondering if it's something similar like what we had in Rise, where you get your like three basic attacks that the Palamutes can do, and you get that, but in the form of weapons, or is there actual depth to the move set? Like, hey, can I full burst from sacred with my gun? <laughs> is that is that a reasonable thing? <laughs> Yeah, I think, again, this is <clears throat> maybe not something we can dive too much into, but, um, you know, we don't expect everybody to um, fight an entire hunt on the back of a sacred. Um, but there, you know, because the world is so much bigger and there are things in here that are um, mechanics that are about maybe luring a monster to a different area or separating a monster from a, a pack of others, um, like you're, you're separating like the, the alpha Doshaguma from the rest of them. Um, you will be on your sacred and you want to, you know, essentially defend yourself. So um, while this isn't like a huge offensive option, it is something that like helps you out a little bit as you're doing some okay. of those mechanics, like trying to separate a monster, lure it to a different area, things like that. Okay. So there was one thing that I was a little bit concerned when I read the um, the blog post in regards to the mounted stuff, which is it, me it made mention of this auto dodge thing where sacred will automatically dodge monster attacks. Yeah, so this isn't also going to be something where it's a again like a just totally breaks like your offensive and defensive options. It is like kind of a little bit more of a convenience while you are doing other actions on Sacred, whether that's moving to a different area or um, just trying to traverse, you know, the land. I guess um, that that is something that will help you out a little bit. But um, again, it's not going to be something where it's just like I'm going to hunt this monster completely on the back of a Sacred, and it's just going to be baby mode and uh, <laughs> you know. Dodge everything for me. It's not going to be like that. Do we have full um, control of Sacred when we're riding it? Or is it like uh, the Tail Raiders in Iceborne where they would just like, you'd mark a position in the map? Or is it like a mix of both of those? Yeah, it's a mix of both of those. John, I'll let you jump in too. But um, if you would just like Sacred to lead you to the next destination that you set on the map, it can do that. Um, if you prefer to, um, you know, write it manually um you could also do that as well so that yeah there's a lot of different options in there yeah i want to ride yeah. around in, in sacred that's gonna be fun go ahead yeah. jono yeah so joe spawn you got best of both worlds to be honest you can control sacred as you want you can see that uh, in the latest trailer as well you can pull off some pretty cool tight turns and maneuvers while riding sacred and you can um, glide. But also like yeah like if you're like me yeah you can glide and if you're like me who always got lost in the ancient forest you can literally put a point on a map and <laughs> sacred will take you there so you know it's also got that helpful element where you can be like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna eat a sandwich while i move to the other side of the map i'm hungry i don't want to stop playing put yeah. a point on have a snack <laughs> watch out for any doshagumas on the prowl and you'll be fine yeah okay. so best of both worlds okay yeah. so one of my concerns in in regards to this is obviously um this is something that i even mentioned all the way back in the beta of rise which is i thought Sharpening on Palamutes feels a little bit too powerful. And I see and I seen on the website that you can sharpen on top of sacred. Is there like a disadvantage to that? Or is it just like, nope, sharpens just like usual. You jump on sacred, you sharpen your weapon. Like what's what's happening with that? Yeah, you are able to take actions on sacred like you could with the Palamutes in Rise. Um you know, I think one of the ways we see it is it's it's not necessarily like a huge crutch that you're going to be able to do all the time, but, um, you know, it does take some time to whistle for your sacred. So, okay. um, you know, say you get knocked down or something, you can whistle it in, but it's not something that just happens e immediately. So, yeah, um, I saw, I saw that people were saying, Oh, it's wirefall 2.0. And I was like, no, that, that takes way too long. That's not wirefall at yeah, all. Yeah. <laughs> That's not how it works. 
Yeah, and you know, even Wirefall and Rise, I think, uh, ended up being like a little bit of a trap, right? Like mm-hmm. you got used to it, and then um, you know, the monsters were designed in a way to abuse the fact that you um, <laughs> would just do it instinctually. So, um, you know, the team thinks about stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. I don't think there's too much to worry about there. Yeah, like with, with the example we saw of that being used in the trailer, obviously, you know, that was the Chatacabra, which is you know quite an early monster. So. You know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna absolutely start volleying you <laughs> as soon as it catches you. But yeah, you know, as Joe said, you know, there's a delay on it. Um, you know, you're still vulnerable, and also like, watch for some break. Most of my carts, most of my carts, were from wire falling and getting oh, yeah. caught on lo- the way up because you don't have iframes, that. right? Yeah. So yeah, it's. I think it's a great one if you know trouble's coming, you can use it. Or if you've taken a big hit and you think there's a window to get away from it, you can use it again. But yeah, it's not got that instant reaction that you can wire fall with, Um, which I think is a great balance because obviously, you know, wire bugs, you have, you can see the wire bug, you know, if you have that resource or not, but we're secret, you know, you're like, is it close enough and things like that? So, yeah. So my next point here is probably going to end up being more of a feedback point for the team, I think, more than anything else, because... Uh, I've I've put a community post on my channel when you know ahead of us doing this podcast to get some feedback from people and see what they wanted to ask and stuff like that. And by far, one of the most asked questions was, "Can we customize sacred?" I don't believe that we are talking about. Ah! That. <laughs> <laughs> but nice try. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, it's, it's like, uh, I wasn't aware, but like, just in case that wasn't in the books, it's like, just know this is definitely something that people want. They want to, you know, change the saddle, change the colors, you know, change change as much as they can. But like, because people really embrace sacred and they want to be able to customize the crap out of it. That's the vibe that I got from uh, from a lot of the questions in there. So I've, I've seen that... Um, um in the presentation apparently we've used uh, npc followers is that going to be a feature that we're going to be having in the game i'm assuming we can't go too in depth with this one because obviously that is a major feature that you'll want to reveal with its own trailer and whatnot but just uh can we expect that this is going to be something that we're going to be able to do just like summon three followers which i believe uh, takuda-san did in one of the demos or all of them i don't know go for it Jonah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we saw such a fantastic response to the follower system in Sunbreak. Um, and, you know, I loved it as well. I used it a lot. And um, so obviously in Wilds, we've confirmed that there are optional AI followers. Um, so, you know, if you want that kind of multiplayer feel, but you don't want to play online or you can't play online at the moment, that's what that features for. And also it can be a, a little bit of a help. You know, if you're being focused down by a monster, then you can, you can call them in. So, yeah, it's basically the next step of the follower system um, that you saw in some break. Um, and for those that aren't familiar with that, yeah, AI buddies that will come and help you out. Um, but, you know, don't expect to be carried. Yeah, of course. <laughs> are the, yeah, are these... You're, you're able to... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you're you. Um, yeah, you can basically just fire an SOS flare and um, these three NPC hunters will, will join you. So, um, you know, I think a lot of this was in feedback to the fact that <clears throat> not everybody loves to play online. Not everybody loves to have like more of that social experience, but they do want to have like kind of like that more group hunting feel. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was something that the team really wanted to implement. So, um, yeah, I think it's it's a really cool addition. So we're looking forward to to people being able to use that. So I'm I'm going to I'm going to try my luck. Are these going to be a NPCs that we also interact with, like in hubs and whatnot? Or is it just like? I think it's another one that we can talk about right now. But, uh, I'm, so sorry. Yeah. I'm so greedy. <laughs> I want all the details. I want it all. Yeah, no. no, but I get it. We're gonna we're gonna have followers. Uh we don't we probably don't have details on scaling either, so I'm not even gonna ask you guys about that. I think that's fine. Uh but we'll we'll learn more about followers at a dedicated time, I'm sure. But just be aware because I I, I can assure to you guys there's a significant portion of my community that the second followers were expanded upon because if you remember in rise and sunbreak followers used to just have those very designated quests and then at some point the team just said you know what just put them everywhere 
and people were like, yes, never go back. Oh, I love it. <laughs> there yeah. were so many people I love it. in my community that were just like, yes, this is the best. I love hunting with Hinoa and Minoto and Luchika and everybody, and it's awesome. Especially Luchika with throwing bombs at you whenever you get <laughs> Yeah, you know, as much as we love Monster Hunter as a multiplayer game um, and a social experience, like we, like we've talked about with the story stuff as well. Like we really want to, you know, there's definitely a huge community of people who just like to hunt solo or yeah. don't like to play online, and uh, you know, this is just another way to kind of like service that group. So I think it's a cool addition. So, and I believe you also mentioned earlier seamless transition from village into hunting locale. So there's no loading screen between going uh, from our village to a hunting locale. Yeah, you just stole yeah, no loading out. screens. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I yeah, said so this. I said this in the first trailer. <laughs> we're gonna go from village to hunting without loading screens, and nobody believed me. People called me crazy. They all laughed at you, but who's laughing now? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so when, when you're in a village, the cool thing is um, you can just kind of like walk out of that village um, like or you ride out on the back of your sacred and, you know, uh, Alma will follow you, your Palico will follow you and you just you just go. Um, yeah, so it's very seamless. There's not like, you know, think about like the rise hub and then you you start a quest and you jump into like, yeah. uh Gosh, like the shrine. I'm trying to remember the lo locale the names, breaks. but like the shrine just, ruins, right? Yeah, you go yeah. With, yeah it's just breaks. like, the, yeah, it feels very like instance in that way. Um, so yeah, with wilds, it's not necessarily like that. It's yeah, you kind of just go out and you're in the world. That is very exciting. Does that work in in a multiplayer setting as well? Then, like, it, there's three other people with you in the lobby, and everybody just seamlessly goes on a hunt. Yes. You, 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 yeah, you're the host. You say say you're the host, and me, say you're the host, and me and Joe want to jump in. Yeah. Then we jump into your world, and we're there. That's that's awesome. That that is it's just like it's something that is is like you guys were saying. It's such an evolution that when you guys say it like that, I just still have trouble visualizing it because I'm so used to the the lobby system. And you know, everybody jumps in. We go to the gathering hub, and then we set up, and then we go. And just thinking about no, we just get in there and we we go off and do our own thing, which is really really cool. So, yeah, I mean, to, to kind of uh, build upon that. So in some of the interviews, the team were asked about multiplayer and ease of kind of joining. And whilst there will be parts, you know, during the story where there might be some specific single player elements to it or like solo experiences, the team have done a ton of work to streamline multiplayer and joining your friends compared to World based upon the feedback we saw with, with World and Iceborne. And on top of that, if somebody is in a situation that is kind of solo flagged you can kind of basically still connect to each other so that when they're available again you can join up um so it's much smoother much less have you done this i need to do that now it yeah the team have really really took on and listened to the feedback from the community on that because they saw how passionate people were about it so you're like i, I got a little bit what were you just talking about you're talking about the story cutscenes in a multiplayer setting right because that was another thing that I was going to bring up. I would say events. Like, because okay. obviously that's based upon kind of paraphrasing once again from some of the articles that have come out today, but there'll be situations or times when, you know, this certain thing is happening um, linked and to your gonna, progress through you're the You're going to have to do that thing solo, but yeah. people, people that are with you will be informed of the state that you're in, which was kind of like that, something that we were doing on on this on like you know on voice chat or whatever. It's like, hey, can I jump into your quest now? Or whatever. Yes, I've seen the cutscene and now it's done. Yeah, it's basically uh, there'll be more detail gone into, but from the interviews, basically you you can be connected to your friend, like even if you're not physically in that, okay. that place with them or in their game yet. And then basically when they're available to join, you can hop in. Okay, so I, I can already tell we're not talking too much about like multiplayer cutscenes and stuff like that. So I'm not going to push you. I've I've already pushed you guys so much. Oh no, that's fine. No, there's there's some great bits to say. There's a lot of um, oh, really? like, interviews that have gone out that kind of delve into that. So I'm kind of paraphrasing from what I've read so far yeah, today yeah. around that. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so in regards to the the zones. Are the zones, uh, what would you say we can expect in terms of size? Because I've seen a lot of people are saying, oh, it's about twice the size of like a world zone or something like that. Yeah, so we have said that they are, tw yeah, they are twice the size of those in previous games. Um, and, you know, of course, there's going to be multiple uh, locales that we haven't revealed yet. I know mm -hmm. there's been some like... Uh, 
some questions of like, is this game just an entire desert? Like you're just, you know, the sandy desert the whole time. I'm like, no, no, you guys know that Monster Hunter has always delivered a huge variety of biomes and locales and, you know, lots of different like colors and themes. So um, you can expect that here. But obviously right now we're only talking about the wild sp- or not. Sorry, not wild sparkles. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> when, when swept, Jeez, what is, when yeah. swept planes. Yeah. <laughs> John, help me out here. I'm blanking. On yeah, the yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I get, I, I get that. I get that confused all the time too. Don't worry, Joe. It's, it's like I, I'm always thinking, wait, is this wind, wind, windy planes, windward planes, wind sweat? Right. Windward, I, windward. It's planes. windward planes. Yes, is yes, it windward? It's windward planes. <laughs> See, yeah, we were. Yeah. yeah, I guess windward like the planes. Both of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we've we've absorbed so we've been we've been cramming these interviews and all these yeah, videos that you. have come out since. Yeah, we're like all this new information, and you know, oh, we're simple creatures, so the old stuff goes. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a confusing name, which is. Is why I keep getting it confused. Windward, windswept, wind something, wild spire. It's like it just gets all confused. But <laughs> yeah, uh, but but that's the thing. I think that a lot of the the people that are saying that like, oh, is the game just one big desert? They're probably newcomers to the franchise, which I actually think it's a good thing because it means a lot of people like, oh man, the the this community is really excited about this game. There must be something here that is like special or something. And so people are like, but is the whole game in a desert? Clearly they're, they're not aware that usually we get like, I don't know, four or five maps, something like that. And I, I don't know how many we're getting in wilds, but just saying there's going to be plenty and there's going to be diverse biomes that much. I would expect. I think that's pretty much a given, but uh, yeah, so really big zones. And I'm assuming we're going to get a decent chunk of verticality to it. Yeah, and something that's going to help you with um, the verticality is we have a 3D map this time around, so it can kind of like help you sort out the different layers of the map a little bit easier. Um, I think it looks great. Um, we haven't shown it off yet. Um, I think the UI at this current state is probably not in a final state, so um, yeah, we're hoping to be able to show that to everybody when it's ready. Yeah, we're, we're still in very early days. I, I can't wait to take a look at gameplay. It's going to be insane. But um, yeah, so we have these big zones. Now, one of the things that... Uh, um, that obviously we had in, in zones and, and world and whatnot that I think we saw a lot less of in rise and sunbreak was we had environmental traps. Now in rise and sunbreak, we didn't really have as many of those. So where do you guys see it going for this one? Do we get more than world about the same as world in terms of the amount of things that we can do to interact with the environment? Obviously in one of the trailers, we see them drop a rock when he's separating the herd of Doshagumas. So, um, from the interviews again, uh, yeah, uh, we've seen that those that saw the preview footage that there's more traps than what they were used to in in World and Iceborne. So, if you enjoy like engaging with the environment, and it, even in the trailers, obviously, you know, you've seen the hook slinger bringing down rocks. You've yeah. seen like the sand whirlpool uh, that the Balahara like to take advantage of. Um, so, yeah, you know, what with the whole thing being a much more living, breathing world, you being able to interact and engage with it, or fall foul of it is kind of you know a big a big part of the game i've also heard that camps are going to be working a little bit differently this time around can you guys uh talk a little bit more about that yeah there was a big info drop today so there are various locations throughout the locales where you can choose to build your camp um and each have their pros and cons for example you can choose to build your camp in a riskier more high monster traffic area uh, which could lead to it being destroyed. So your camps can be destroyed. Uh, they aren't a safe haven for you. Um, so yeah, you can you can use some resources to pop up camps where you feel would benefit where you're out the most because because you don't return to camp after quests automatically or back to the village, right? And things like you can keep hunting. You can be like, I want to hunt in this area. Me and my buddies are going to farm this area. So you can set, so you up, set a up a camp. camp. In, yeah, and now you can't put them anywhere. There's like, you know, locations within within the locale. And you can be like, this is where we're going to hang out. Like, this is where if we need more food buffs, this is where we're going to cook and and things like that. So you have that freedom, especially because, you know, the, the locales are twice as big as Weld and Iceborne, you know, so you can basically set up camp where you want to where you want to hunt your favorite areas, things like that, where certain monsters might be rocking. Um, so, yeah, you've got a ton of freedom there. And yeah, it's very, very new rather than having like, you know, your four fixed three or four that- fixed kind of locations that you discover. Yeah, the, the the simple fact of uh, of camps being potentially destroyed by monsters that that's insane. And and I'm sorry, Joe, I don't know if you wanted to jump in on that or not. Yeah, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, Dragon's Dogma a little bit. How you know your camp is like, you know, it's not just there forever. Uh, it can kind of just be destroyed in the middle of the night. 
Um, not exactly like that, but you know, it's, yeah. it's kind of similar to that system. So, um, uh, there's a funny animation, not funny, but like a cute animation that kind of plays when you call in the camp, it just kind of like plops in. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really satisfying. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I saw to, a little bit that. of, of Maximilian dude's video. He was saying that a bunch of Palicos just show up and kind of like, just like, <laughs> <nailed it. laughs> I can't wait to see that. That's going to be awesome. And like, what was fun about that, and you know, it's kind of, camps have kind of been teased since Sacred was first revealed because I think the weapon is carried, or there's there's something hanging there's, on the Sacred, yeah, which there's is part of the tent. Yeah, there's there's yeah. there's pieces that look like tents, and there's like uh, mattresses and whatnot. So yeah, we were mm -hmm. kind of hypothesizing. Hey, yeah, I, is, we, we were even thinking the mount is a camp, so like we stop somewhere and we take the uh, stuff off, and he's, he becomes a camp. So there there were a lot of theories back during the first trailer because there was so much shown about sacred that yeah, we were theorizing that stuff. So, yeah, that's yeah. It's kind of like uh, they're really trying to capture that feeling of camping, like in a you know a real like. Dangerous Basic, world, so basically but, the feeling of being in in a frontier, I guess, which is kind of like yeah. the the vibe that we got from that first earlier. You know, this is uncharted lands. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. It's going to be insane. Yeah, yeah. And, You'll and be able talk, to. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, after you, after you, man, after you. <laughs> uh, I was going to talk about the cooking, so you're able. To I so was I. Like, Great yeah. vibes. <laughs> you, you got it, man. You first. You let, first. Let, let me just let me just point out that like look at look at this is when you know that a team is working on a game that they're really passionate about. It's like these two guys can, can, can <laughs> will even interrupt each other. So excited to talk about it. I love it. Keep going. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I'm not. Maybe Jono, you can actually correct me on this. So I, I, I don't think you can cook essentially anywhere, right? But um, you, you are able to cook like out in the world now instead of uh, just like a designated uh, areas in the village. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. So you can collect ingredients as you're, you know, exploring, hunting, and things like that that you can use to cook. So yeah, you don't have to be like, right, well, uh, I want another food buff, so I'm gonna go all the way back to the village. So. Yeah, you've got that freedom now as well um, to treat yourself to a nice bit of food. Are those yeah. uh, incredible, incredible animation <laughs> as you can expect for the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the food? <laughs> that, that's that's to be expected with the Monster Hunter team. I wouldn't expect anything else. But like, um, d does this mean that the basically the materials that you're using, those are going to be consumable? Because in, in Monster Hunter, usually we unlock the ingredients by finding them out in the world. And then it's like, hey, you've now unlocked wyvern steak you've now unlocked cactus something uh and i imagine that this time around they'll be consumable if you're consuming them on the field right what's been shared so far is that you can enhance your cooking experience okay. by you know <laughs> by ingredients that you bring to the table um but you know to to quote a wise man you know we're not going into that just yet yeah, um yeah. so <laughs> yeah i get you i get you but you can still go get buffs over at the village if that is something that you want and have like the mm. traditional uh food experience that we've had absolutely yeah okay so you can at any point in time if you're like i don't want to mess with the, this system out in the world i just want to go to the village get my yeah. buffs the old school way you can still do that and that's <laughs> that's good to know because i know that there will be players that will prefer it that way so there's the option of doing both or you can just like you know oh actually i've picked up a piece of meat or whatever i'm gonna cook it and whatever I, th I think that i think that is cool it's it's very interesting and it brings almost like a, a survival element and i'm not talking about traditional oh we're gonna full <laughs> survival mode but like it brings just a little bit of a taste of survival of being out into the wild and hunting which is something that i appreciate for the overall hunting experience in monster hunter because it's it's much more of a hunting simulation uh at least for me than it is like a boss fight simulator which you know mm. depends on the type of player that you are going to like one aspect more than the other but yeah that's the the way that i look at it so that that is really cool um i'm just curious do do these food it's i'm you, you guys are probably not going to be able to answer this is this like food t uh, timing on these buffs or is it just like traditional no you've eaten and now you're buffed and that's it i don't believe that's something we've Okay. shared yet um so yeah, okay, that's it there's lots to talk about uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh we've gotten Dush dushaguma balahara shatakabra and then we have something that i saw referenced in my chat as thor magala 
Which I, I we've think... been calling it that uh, between ourselves as well. So whoever <laughs> came up with that, well done. Uh... <laughs> it wasn't me, yeah, by the it. way. Some people seem to think that I'm claiming uh, that I'm claiming ownership of that. It wasn't me. I didn't come up with the name. <clears throat> there were just like three or four people spamming it in my chat, and I was like, "Oh, this is a great name. I like this." So, but uh, people were theorizing that that was potentially the the flagship which i theorized as well but then i was like no actually i don't think so it's probably just the apex and i think it's been mentioned that it is just the apex of the windsworth planes right you know i think a way of looking at it is um <clears throat> if you guys think that's the flagship they're you know they just think about like all the monsters that are going to be in this game we are super early right now yeah we only talked about like what four monsters and we barely yeah, we're barely talking monsters. about this fourth one yeah. so um yeah, if you guys are excited by what you've seen of Thor Magala, just uh, wait, what's in store? You ain't seen nothing uh, yet. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. All right. I like I like where this is going. So one of the things that people are worried about that was very quickly brought up was like, okay, so our hunter is voiced now and the palico is voiced. Uh, what are our options when it comes to that? Can we turn that off if we choose to? Can we not? Yeah, maybe Sorry. let's start with the let's start with the palico voice. Yeah. Um, so yes, you you can change it back to the cat meows if you'd like. Um, I don't think we're talking too much about the other options beyond that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you know really the reason, and you'll see it in the interviews too. The reason for um, why the palico is voiced this time is it's really a huge help for you out in the field. There's so much happening. There are so many dynamic elements that um, are changing all the time. So. Um, those callouts can really, really help you out quite a bit. Um, but again, you know, if you'd like to go back to the traditional style, that is something that you can do. Okay. Does this work in cutscenes as well, or is it only uh, when you're in gameplay? Not sure if we're talking about that yet, but okay. I, yeah, yeah, I'll leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fair. That's fair. No. Um, okay. But yeah, the 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 whole the whole thing about the voice is definitely something that has the community a little bit divided. So I think it's a it's a wise decision to let them turn that stuff off uh, <clears throat> and just get the traditional meows because there's a lot of people that have expressed, no, I just want the meows. I don't want them speaking. It's weird. I th I th like listen to me. The palico is going to be on the whole time, full blast. If there's like a setting to how much he can speak, it's going to be maxed out. I don't care. <laughs> I li I personally I like it. I think it's fun. But yeah, I, yeah, I know I that it is divisive. Go go ahead, Jono. And to kind of build upon what Joe said as well, you know, there's so much going on in the world. It's beneficial, and once again, you know, it's it's your palico is your one of your closest companions, and you know, once again, you know, having a companion you can talk to more, uh, and kind of get see their personality coming out is is a great thing um especially if you're new to monster hunter um because you know we know the palicos are hugely popular across the the spectrum of monster hunter players um but then once again yeah you know if you're a more kind of grizzled hunter and you're just like you know what no you know my, my palico is a feline you know meow meow like you can <laughs> you can have the the palico you know the traditional palico experience uh with voice yeah, I've been guilty a bit myself where like I'm seeing all of the things that they're doing to help me and the notifications on the side and I just like am not registering it because mm -hmm. I'm just too yeah. focused on hunting. So the call outs, you know, especially for again for new players that um, should be something that's really helpful for them calling out like a shock trap that they're placing or like they're giving you heals. That's something that um, you'll be able to hear a little bit easier and it'll help you out in real time. Which I, which I think is something that is very important for us to also consider is that we do want to get new players into the game, right? And we don't just want like, you know, hmm. the same audience all the time. I, I think getting new players is essential for keeping any franchise fresh. So I think it's a good thing that you guys are thinking about, you know, how can we improve the new player experience? Because especially with Monster Hunter, that is a game like... Uh, even in in the last uh, podcast that I did with Joe, you said you, it didn't even click with you your first time. Definitely didn't click with me the first time. So I think it is important to think about that new player experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Like none, none of this comes at the expense of the existing community experience. Yeah. And in many cases, it builds upon it. You look at focus mode and things like that. You know, it, it brings something to everyone. So yeah, I think the key message for us is like, yeah, you're not, you know, Monster Hunter fans, you're not missing out. It's not taken away from the experience. It's adding to it. And like with the Palico, the team were very conscious and went, yeah, well, if you like the old school version, you can have that. You know, once again, it's it's a win for everyone. Yeah, and going back to, 
you asked about the voiced hunter. Um, yes. I don't think we, we can say too much about what the options are with that, but I think one of the goals with this game was really to make your hunter more of like a heroic active figure. I think you see that in the second trailer where your hunter is doing cool stuff in the trailer. Like yeah. You are like the hero of the story. You are like the professional that's coming in here to, you know, address a, a huge situation. So um, you are going to be more of like an active person in this story. Um, and it does feel like a little bit more of a personal journey. So um, yeah, I think that's what we can say for now. But it is it is something that um, you know the team is conscious of. Um, we wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't just add a voice hunter just to like, you know, just for no reason. Your there, hunter now I has voice. Is, yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is like there are story reasons why that's in there, and um, I think there's a lot of um, good justification for why there is a voice hunter at this point. So um, yeah, we'll be able to share more on that in the future, though. Oh man, I I can't wait. So I wanted to jump into a little bit more about the the seamless quests uh, because obviously you've said that now we can start quests pretty much anywhere so long as we're out in the world, we're hanging out, we see a monster, it's like okay, we're gonna go hunt this monster. Now previously. In, in World and even in Rise, we've had expeditions that you basically, we just go to a locale and there's going to be monsters there and we hunt the monsters, but they're not really quests. It's a different experience. How does it work in terms of us just, okay, we're going to be hunting here. We're going to be farming a couple of monsters in this zone, but we want to do it in quests so that we get those extra rewards from quests and whatnot. How's that aspect of it going to work? Do you want to do this one, Joe, or shall I? Go for it. Yeah, so there's kind of two ways. There's the more you can speak to Alma, who can you can select a quest from from her, and kind of go on the hunt. Or there's the more kind of dynamic one, where if you see a big monster, you see you see Dosha roaming like roaming over over a sand dune, you can go up and start fighting it. And after a short window, you will get the option to formally initiate a quest against that monster. And that's and that's the 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 voice point that we got during that trailer we are, we are now beginning this hunt in the name of the guild is, is that what that's it's effectively for? effectively you know that's basically what what you're doing yeah you're like nice. right this is because you know a bit like on the previous bit like as we saw in the trailer you are the expedition leader like in world you were part of the fifth fleet right but you are you are the you've been chosen as to lead the expedition right so yeah you can kind of you have that authority to be like right <laughs> you're a quest <laughs> come here <laughs> um so yeah um it's great so yeah you can be like oh well let's go hunt this and and things like that and yeah you get those extra rewards it's not like an expedition where you would get like your your extra goodies yeah uh, because you just decided to jump a certain monster and so basically if if let's say we get uh, we get a couple of quests that are formally assigned to us and you're just like roaming the world and you see that monster, you can go like, all right, I have a quest for that monster. Let me just go kill it real quick, be done with it. And you don't need to go and officially start the, the quest in a village or ask Alma or whatever. It's like, no, th this is going to be the way we're going to kill it now. I mean, yeah, it doesn't even have to be a monster that you might have on your target list. You know, yeah. it could be like, yeah, you could just start finding a monster and it will dynamically become a quest if you accept it to become one. You can you can decline. Nice. You can be like, no, I don't want this. You, you can be like, I'm going to fight this monster because it's interrupted me fighting Chattacabra. Yeah. But, and then it can be, but you don't have to force it into a quest. You can be like, no, no, I just wanted to kind of scare it away um, or break apart quickly. Um, so and yeah, can you, you have, to, have that freedom. Th that begs the question, can you have two quests active at once? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know that either. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's like the first thing comes to mind. So I'm fighting a Chattacabra. This Doshaguma shows up. I start hitting it. It's like, oh, do you want to start a quest? Okay. Does it cancel Chattacabra? Does, now you have two quests. It's kind of weird. But yeah, we we don't know those yet. Yeah, But it, it's like so many things instantly start popping into mind. <laughs> that's absolutely crazy. But yeah, that's that's good to know. But yeah, that's, that's really cool that you can now just do seamless quests, particularly if the whole map is seamless. That's absolutely insane. It's so good. I'm just absolutely super excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> so we've seen we've seen a lot of ecology. I, I don't think we're talking about ecology all that much, right? Uh, in terms of like small monsters, like because I know everybody's gonna ask, hey, can I can I capture the the baby puke puke? Can I can I can I take it? Can I take it back to my room and it can become my little friend? <laughs> Yeah, I think this is something we're probably yeah. not talking too much about. Right now. <laughs> yeah, but we love we love to see the uh, you know all the artwork and everything that's been created um, for what everybody is calling Baby Puke Puke. So we love to see it. <laughs> yeah, Joe and I scooped insane. up a load of artwork and sent it over to the team. Uh, <laughs> we were like, "Oh, look at this cool artwork!" 
That's that's good to see. That that's really really nice. So um, Duran Moran, right? Where we ha- we can confirm that one. Sand whales, because we have the sand skiff and all that. That's one hundred percent confirmed. Right? <laughs> just what? just shooting your shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna try. He's, he's gonna start shouting random monster names at us <laughs> and try and catch us off guard. <laughs> exactly. No, I I, I was like, great like, Jagras, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, we're just like dropping it into sentences. <laughs> no, I, uh, I I wanted to ask specifically to, to each of you from all of the information that you guys have seen so far. I guess we could start with Joe. Like, what is the most the the most exciting thing that the thing that excites you the most right now uh, about Wilds from what you've seen so far that you can talk about? Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm not trying to make this hard for you. I swear. No, I think for me. Um, I'm really excited just about, again, like going back to how seamless the world is. Um, and, you know, one of the things I really liked in Monster Hunter World was the guiding lands. Um, and, you know, just like getting in there and just like nonstop hunting for like hours. Right. So um, now this isn't like necessarily like a huge one to one with that. Um, but it is, but, you know, a lot of the barriers between like hunting has been broken down in terms of just being able to like go out there and just like hunt for as long as you want and it feeling really seamless and like you're exploring a world. Um, so I, I'm really excited about that. I love how dynamic the game is. So like, I can't wait to see like all the crazy stuff that's going to happen to people. <laughs> Just like, you know, with something like Dogma, where like, I think I talked about it with you uh, on the last podcast of like, things that we didn't expect to happen in the game. And we're just seeing clips about it online. And we're just like losing our minds like, hey, that was possible. I didn't know that was possible. I feel like this game is going to generate a lot more of that than you've seen in previous Monster Hunters where like crazy interactions are going to happen and like maybe there's like this huge like um, sand whirlpool or whatever that happens in the middle of a hunt or like the storm like creates crazy situations um, that you didn't expect. So all of those things coming together to really create like a super dynamic and like unpredictable hunt. I think that's that's the most exciting part for me. It's not going to feel like a static game it's going to feel like very alive and very different yeah what about you jono for me i mean i think joe covers a good bit of it as well but for me it's just the evolution like you know when you think of like generations ultimate to world and how different that was and i feel that world to wilds is that again like this huge leap forward and when i think about it I'm like, how could you do that like this is like this is peak like you know and then it's happening and we can see it happening and seeing the community kind of see it happening as well as they've gone from what's wild like what, what? this is all you know 2025 and then see this information come out and they kind of acted the same as we are like with the excitement but yeah it's this it's just a huge step up and everything you like is getting more good more goodness <laughs> like um and that's it for me like the, the package is just like yeah but the seamless the seamlessness seamlessnessness blah, 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 <laughs> is is a huge thing for me as well like this is such a new thing for monster hunter like you've gone through you know used to go in there everyone ready up cool wicked let's go to right you know like we'll start heading off you can catch up come on and just wandering around one if you can go around collecting ingredients or you know supplies you know oh, i need some honey whereas the others can start the hunt and things like yeah it's just the scale um, is it's another level isn't it so <laughs> yeah i think i think evolution is a key word right um i think people coming from world or rise may have like trouble kind of like wrapping their head around all the different mechanics and everything maybe some of it feels like foreign or like they're not quite sure about it but i mean again like we've stated a couple times like this is a new generation of monster hunter so we have to like kind of rethink like how that is going to feel it's not just going to be world with a new coat of paint in the re engine right like it's going to be a uh, really like a step up like the team has looked for answers of like how do you step up like and evolve monster hunter to like the next generation take advantage of the technology that's that's available and um i think you know, at least from what we've seen, like we really like some of the answers. I think they've really, um, really stepped things up to take advantage of that. So, um, yeah, it's it's looking great, and we're super excited by it. Yeah, it's looking absolutely phenomenal. Personally, I can't wait. So, I have one more uh, message from the Iron Breakers, which is like when I asked them, "Hey, is there anything that you guys would like to shout out to, to the Capcom team or questions stuff like that?" And a lot of people 
basically just wanted you guys to take back that they really appreciate the game. That was pretty much it. <laughs> just take, <laughs> take back that he was like, hey, we're really super excited about the game. We can't wait to play it. I was actually, damn, there's a lot of comments that are basically just saying this. That's it. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, we, we love to hear it, man. Like, uh, it's a, it's a, like, an honor, like, to work on this franchise. I personally think it is, like, not, you know, obviously, like, we work for Capcom, so, you know, corporate shills yeah. or whatever. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you know, I've got to work on a lot of cool franchise, John. Oh, you, you've had that um, as well. So, I mean, I think this is, this is one where it's, like, it, it does feel really special. There is, you know, there's a team behind it that really gets it, that they, um, they don't rest on their laurels, they listen to the community, um, and that they're always thinking for ways to just like really evolve this series. So um, yeah, it is a it is a pleasure to work on this game and work with this community. So yeah, we're we're just super happy about all of it. So when can the community expect the next big uh, news drop? Because now we've kind of opened the, as you guys said, opened the faucet a little bit. So we've gotten trailer state of play, trailer at SGF with previews at SGF. Uh, when can we expect the next big drop of information? I mean, first playables at Gamescom, like, so roll on August. You know, that's quite, I like to think that's quite a big drop. First public global hands-on ever for Monster Hunter Wilds. Like, you know, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be playing it there. I, I can't wait. I've, I've, seen, <laughs> I've seen a lot of people ask if there's going to be a public demo after that, if that's going to be a thing or not. Yeah, the only thing we've said is obviously first yeah. playable hands-on is physically, physically, physically at, at the Gamescom. Event. So yeah. it's it's not going to be. There's not no guarantees about when if there will be like a demo later down the line or something. But I would expect the demo at some point before the game, kind of like what we had with World and Rise and whatnot. That's just usually the way that Capcom works. But obviously, I'm not going to ask you guys to confirm that because <laughs> yeah, I just say like you know, I've already squeezed blood from a stone today. <laughs> I'd be like, just take it one step at a time, you know. Yeah. You know, with some, you know, the team are really keen to signpost when what's coming is coming, you know, yeah. so the community can look forward to it with us and say, physical playable Gamescom this August. So yeah, let look forward to that. And you know, even if you can't make it, because you know it's one place in a big world, oh, yeah. um, you know, there's going to be tons of coverage and stuff. So you'll vicariously even be able to enjoy what what comes out of Gamescom. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, and, you know, as, as far as demos go, um, I know people always think like, oh, yeah, it's playable at, at a physical <laughs> event, then you can surely just uh, press export and send that out to the world. <laughs> um, uh, no, that's really that's really not how it works. Um, you know, anything that goes out into, you know, uh, into people's hands in that way is is so much different from a curated public event so this, you've got like six foot tall Jono like standing over your shoulder <laughs> making sure nothing breaks so um, yeah, it, is, it is a little different but um yeah again like just uh we'll take it beat by beat but obviously like the momentum has started and um we are we're going from like kind of news beat to news beat but it will be a little bit between now and and gamescom but um, yeah. you know get your get your travel plans ready yeah. but i won't be there unfortunately <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But um, maybe maybe I can like FaceTime you in. But like, <laughs> yeah, put, yeah, put a little yeah. put a little screen of Joe. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But like, uh, yeah, I, I do hope that people understand, especially now in the age of data mining, it gets very hard to just like, oh, let's just put a demo out there, and then suddenly it's like, wait, what do you mean people already know the full roster of monsters that's coming out? What <laughs> what happened? <laughs> so yeah it's 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 not that simple but yes i'm really looking forward to, to gamescom uh but i'm gonna let you guys get back to work uh and yeah if you guys are excited about months on the wilds be sure to subscribe bell notification icon all of that jazz and next news drop is going to be around the time of gamescom and that's pretty much it for me anything else you guys want to shout out yeah i mean depending on when this goes out Monster Hunter Stories has probably just released or is just about to release. Um, and it's on PC, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch. So shameless plug, it's a really cool little Monster Hunter turn-based combat it RPG. Is. So do do check it out. Um, and, you know, it's got quite chibi graphics, but don't let that put you off. It's it's a really great game with a wonderful story and some really in-depth combat as well. Um, and, you know, if, if you like Brachiodios, you can fight alongside it, which is really cool because I think Brach is cool. So. Uh, but yeah, that, that's me. And thanks everyone for the amazing reactions. You know, Joe and I go through it all. We put together sentiment reports, which we share, we share directly with the team the, uh, and the dev team. 
and it's huge so you know we do go through all your comments on reddit facebook twitter youtube and stuff like that um so thank you for your passion thank you for your support it is seen um and uh yeah wish list the game as well if you want <laughs> <laughs> how about you yeah, just just uh, to, uh, <clears throat> just, just to add on to the shameless plug yeah monster Hunter Sports <laughs> 2 is also out on playstation uh whatever <laughs> Or Friday, I guess, whenever this goes up. So, and see, um, the the advantage of Monster Hunter Stories too is that it's got Basel Goose on it. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> number fifty-two. Buzz it for Baz. <laughs> <laughs> the B fifty-two at number fifty-two. Yeah, the B fifty-two. We'll see you guys um, on the next one. Thank you all very yeah. much for watching. Stay strong. Stay safe. Peace out.